Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm very excited to do because this video is a makeup tag video and it is related to declutter. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Eva, I love all things beauty. If you like watching makeup videos, tag videos in particular, give this video a like and I hope you consider subscribing to my channel today. Without further ado, let's dive in. I just saw this video today from Anielka Nyquist. This Anielka is not a creator for this video. The creator is Ava Marie. I will also have her video and channel linked in the description box as well as Anielka's. I love both of their channels and I enjoy watching their videos. I do love watching makeup tag videos and this is actually, as a matter of fact, my first makeup tag video and it is a declutter. Who doesn't like a good declutter questions? Everything that I'm wearing today on my face will be, of course, linked for you in the description box and all the products that I'm going to be uh, mentioning today also will be a link for you in that area as well. There are 10 questions and question number one is makeup item that's impractical in my collection. So in this category, I am going to show you a product uh, that is impractical in a way it is made more so a packaging and configuration of it rather than the product itself. I think that the product that I'm going to be showing you is actually really good and I love it. So it has nothing to do with the quality or the brand or anything like that. I'm going to show you this palette, a blush trio. And the reason why I think it falls into this category of being impractical is because these sections are very, very narrow. And as you can see, all these blushes are completely three different colors. For my powder blushes, I really like to use my blush brushes and they unfortunately do not necessarily fit into these narrow sections. Even though I really love this blush and I reach for them, but it really takes me a long time time to build up the color that I need because I have to really angle my fluffy brush into these small areas so that way I can only pick up the color that I want. Question number two is a mascara that's definitely expired in my collection. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating here. Not so long ago I have went through my mascara collection and did a good amount of decluttering. So at the moment I do not have that many mascaras. The product that I almost like refuse to let go. I've had it way past its due date. This is a mascara primer from Essence and this is a volume booster lash primer. Besides that this is an amazing product, this is such a jam of a drugstore. If you've tried this, uh, let me know if you like it as much as I do. This is a drugstore product that performs like a high-end product. It makes a ton of a difference uh, when you apply your mascaras. If you have a mascara that transfers, this primer will help not to transfer. This has a really nice wand to it and it's just very easy to apply the product without it being a messy all over your eyes. So I really love this. I definitely need to repurchase this, but it clearly needs to be decluttered. So question number three, a red lipstick not a question. Why do I say it's a question? So number three, a, a red lipstick you never wear. I love red lipsticks and I do have a good amount of red lipsticks and I reach for them. So the one that I feel like I never wear is the one that I clearly do not like because I like something else. And I do have one of those. I don't even think this product is available anymore. This is by Essence. This is a Color Boost Matte About Matte Liquid Lipstick. I can't even find uh, the name of the shade on this packaging, but I don't even think this is available any longer. So this was like a squeezy tube. The applicator was really cool. It was like figure eight and it was really comfortable to apply because it would like hug your lip almost and apply the color. Actually, it was a really nice formula however it was super drying like, I think I bought this for a full face of essence a video and I think I maybe used it a few times after that but I would have to apply chopstick or some type of balm prior to applying this then it would be okay but on its own it was super drying maybe that that's why it was also discontinued number four a high-end item not worth the price tag and boy do I have a good one for you Here it is, you guys. This is a sunset palette from Natasha Denona. Hear me out here, hear me out. I do have it on my eyes today because when I started digging through my makeup uh, looking for items uh, for this video, I just realized that 
I barely touched it. I barely touched it. So I decided to do a look for this video since I'm going to be talking about it. This is a large Natasha Denona palette. This is, I believe, 120 something dollars. Very expensive. I mean, it is beautiful, like gold leather packaging. But as we speak, I think this palette is a half off. I think it's about 64, $65 on Sephora's website on sale. It is worth that price tag, but not the full price that it was originally listed for. I definitely do not like the packaging. It does have like this magnets here very raw edges if you look here it's not very well made it only looks pretty from the outside but then when you open it does have a mirror but then it also has this little thing uh, like a clear separator that has names written on it so you technically can't re remove it because then I would lose the names for the shades but then it's always on the way whenever I try to do my makeup even today when I was trying to do my makeup I was folding it like this and half and had to hold it in a very awkward position because it would block my mirror. Like, even though there is a dotted line here, you can rip it, but then I would lose the names. It is a Natasha Denona formula. It is a really nice formula. However, is this anything innovative in the color selection? Absolutely not. The shimmer shades are nice, but they're not $128 nice. None of the lighter shades would give me a really high shine reflection. And with which is really upsetting because I'm holding $128 palette and I cannot even do a complete look the way I needed to. I mean, I do absolutely love this uh, look. The quality of all the mattes are beautiful. For $65, maybe you should run and get it because the quality is great, but definitely not the price that I pay for it. I think I got this palette during the holiday season when this palette was, I think like 20 or 25% off. And I still think that I overpaid majorly for it because I can assure you, I can recreate this same exact look with color pop shadows. Number five, a drugstore dud. Okay, there's a fly in my room. Um, you know guys, this was not easy, but yet it was easy. The not easy part is because I've tried a good amount of drugstore affordable products this year so far, and I have to tell you that a lot of them were really, really good. So when I came down to this number five point, I had to stop for a second and think. However, I do have a good one for you. Well, it's not good, but... So I do have an item for you that was a complete disappointment. And even though it is an affordable item and it wasn't a lot of money that I wasted, however, it was still a waste. This was an eyeshadow palette from Elf Cosmetics from their Cookies and Dreams collection. You've heard me talk about this palette earlier in the year and I really liked the color story and the swatches were clearly misleading on the promo videos because they looked creamy, they looked super pigmented. This palette is horrible. It takes a lot of me to say that something is absolutely horrible. Uh, there is no pigment, the mattes are chalky, nothing blends or packs or anything. The shimmers are so underwhelming, even though at first you think, yeah, this is a cute color story, beautiful, some neutral, some pops of color, but absolutely horrible quality. This was the worst $10 I've ever spent. And number six, an eyeshadow palette you forgot you had. So this one is gonna be purely due to my personal preference, you guys. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the quality of this product. Very nice quality. It was a brand that I actually like and I like other things from the brand. However, we're talking about the specific palette that I forgot about. And this is a palette by Give Beauty. This is I See In Color eyeshadow quad in the shade Danger Zone. So, like I said, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this palette. It is a nice quality. Personal preferences, I tend not to reach for this type of cooler tones, like grayish, taupey, cool tones. And also this darker shade here has gold glitter speckles. After I did a review of the entire brand when it was launched back in March of this year, and I never reached for this palette since then. Number seven, a foundation that's not your shade match. <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, so this is actually interesting because I feel like I need to explain myself here. You guys know how much I love complexion products. I love my foundations, concealers, my powder foundations, and anything that's uh, complexion related. I'm a very pale person. 
I do not like tanning because I do tend to burn. Even though I live in Florida, I still do a lot of self tanning for those reasons that I just said. My skin tone can be different sometimes depending on a self tanner. Okay, so depending on which self tanner I use, my foundation need to be somewhat matching. So I have to say that most of my foundations I am cool neutral undertone, however, at times that changes. Okay, now that I've explained myself, let me show you the product that is a wrong undertone for me. However, I absolutely love it and I wear it and this bottle is almost empty. This is a Bare Minerals Bare Pro Foundation and I have mine in the shade Cashmere 06, which has a slight yellow undertone. And as a matter of fact, I'm wearing this foundation right now. I'm also wearing a lot of bronzer on my face today and a an makeup look that has warm undertone with a yellow eyeshadow. All of these things can trick your mind to not notice that my foundation actually has a yellow undertone today. As far as this one, this is definitely a yellow undertone, which is definitely not my natural undertone. However, I make it work and it works really well. And as far as this specific foundation, the formula is fantastic. It's high coverage, it's very thin and melts into your skin. I feel like it has a smoothing and blurring effect. And maybe once I run out of this, I will repurchase this in a proper shade. Number eight, product that wasn't worth the hype. Okay guys, don't cancel me out for this one. For this category, I have a product from Fenty Beauty. And this is a Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. When this product was launched, you remember how much hype that was around it and this powder was sold out for months in my shade. I didn't get my hands on this uh, powder for several months after it was launched. Of course, when I finally got it, I was expecting a, a miracle. But when I got it and when I applied it on my face, I can't say it's a bad product. It is not by all means a bad product. It is nice, it's smoothing, it is long wearing, it is very thin formula, um, it is that medium coverage. It is a lovely product. Um, however, it was not life-changing. And so my reaction to this product was like, oh, this is it? Like, where's the magic? I was somewhat disappointed because there was just so much hype about it. Everybody was losing their mind on TikTok and showing you it just has this like high coverage and as a matter of fact, this product doesn't even have a high coverage. And like I said, it's not a bad product. It's not that I don't like it. I was just disappointed because how much hype it was. And I didn't, when I got it, I didn't really see all that. And number nine, concealer you couldn't make work. Interesting point because the ones that I couldn't make work, I decluttered out of my collection. I had two and I will just put a picture on the screen or maybe if you remember those. They were Boeing concealers by Benefit, both the first one and then the second launch. The second one's a little bit better. I think it was a slightly improved formula. I did test it here on my channel and I decluttered both of them. So the first one was definitely absolutely not workable. It didn't even matter how I applied it. It would start clumping up under my eyes, create that texture that I didn't even have. I tried everything I possibly could and to give it a fair shot. And yeah, that product just did not work for me. So we have the last category and it's number 10. If you had to start one makeup category, from scratch, what would it be? I had to think about it for a second because I do love my makeup collection, a lot of trials and errors. I think if I would have to pick a one category, I think that would be black liquid eyeliners. I specify black color because I do have a few brown liquid eyeliners that I actually like and I use them a ton, but black liquid eyeliners, I have a bunch and I only use like few of them. And I feel like there's so many good ones out there that I haven't tried yet. However, I don't use black liquid eyeliners that often. You know, they're a little bit more on the dramatic side. I use them, but I don't use them too often. So if I would have to revamp the whole entire category and start from scratch, trying new products and rebuild that area of my collection, that would be a uh, black liquid eyeliner. If you have any good suggestions for a black liquid eyeliner, leave them in the comments below. Okay guys, this sums up my video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was fun for me to film it. If you are a creator as well, if you like to film this video, make sure to tag me in your video. I would love to watch it. I will have Angelica's and Ava Marie's videos linked in the description box. And if you enjoyed this video, give this video a like and I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next videos. Bye.